Today we are talking about one of my favorite cartridges of all time. It's the 300 Win Mag. Here's why. This is not for nothing. This isn't a video that I just wanted to talk about 300 Win Mag randomly. It's because I'm a sad little puppy left at home. So I set up a trip to go hunting in Africa and 10 of you guys were all, all set, are there to join me in Africa. But I flew as far as Atlanta and then Delta missed my flight and then just had nothing to rebook me on. So all of them got to go on the trip and I'm just home alone looking at this Bagara Ridge that I had all dialed, ready to go for this hunt. Chambered in 300 Win Mag. So let's at least talk about this cartridge. So let's look at the physical cartridges first. This is the 300 Win Mag right here compared to lots of different 30 caliber cartridges. Now, let's look at some numbers though, before we dive it too much into the physical characteristics, because this is why I love 300 Win Mag so much. Compare it to the numbers of the 7 PRC. So 7 PRC, everybody says right now is the long range monster cartridge, and I wouldn't disagree, it's incredible. But the 300 Win Mag was designed in 1963, and if you get the right, lo the right load for it, man, it can be very comparable to what you can also accomplish in a 7 PRC. I mean, look at the drop at 400 yards, the recoils in the same ballpark, the wind drift is a little bit better on the 7 because the 7 millimeter, just that caliber, all else equal, the 7 millimeter are going to win in the aerodynamics on those bullets but it's really very similar. A 300 Win Mag and a 7 PRC. But we gotta compare it, to, compare it to other 30 caliber cartridges. So looking at the physical ones here, you'll see the 300 Win Mag, 30-06, and 308. So let's put up the numbers now of the 308 and the 30-06 compared to the 300 Win Mag, because I think this is the best way to just get a picture for what this cartridge actually is. So the, the 308 is really slow. It is. It's just, you know, 2,700 feet per second. And that's always been the knock on the 308 is that it just doesn't quite have the steam to reach out longer distance, but it is in a shorter action. Now the 30-06, which is widely considered to be like the hunting cartridge, right? The 30-06 is incredible because of the balance where it is between power and recoil. But if you want that flatter trajectory, you want to shoot those heavier bullets, it's 300 Win Mag that's pushing bullets around 250 or 300 feet faster than the 30-06. That's a notable, noticeable step up. Okay, so let's so something that I think is really interesting, when I look at a, at a cartridge and I'm really trying to understand it, I go check on Google and I like to see what the top states are for using that cartridge in the United States. And it always just kind of gives me a picture of what people are mostly using this for. So what would you guess of the 50 states, what state per capita is more interested in the, the 300 Win Mag than others? And that is Colorado, according to Google and then Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, and Missouri. So you look at the rest of those and you see like, that's what's cool about 300 Win Mag is, you know, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, you can guess. It's for hunting elk, right? And Oregon and Washington, they got those big old Roosevelt elk. You can see why it's very popular there. But then even in traditionally whitetail states, you know, Missouri and Wisconsin, it's still a really popular cartridge. I think the reason that it's so versatile then for so many different people is because of the different loads. You can load this from 150 grains, a really light load shooting super fast, or up to 220 grains and slow it down. So what animals can you hunt with the 300 Win Mag? I mean, white-tailed deer, sure. Odd ad, sure. You wanna hunt mule deer, sure. You wanna hunt moose, bear, a black bear, grizzly bear. A, Elk, certainly, perfect for elk. You know, you go to Africa, Kudu, Eland, it's hard to imagine something that 300 Win Mag isn't a perfect cartridge for, even grizzly bear. 
But, I mean, maybe the only limitations are, you know, a Cape Buffalo, Rhino, something like that, Elephant, uh, where it's not even legal to use this cartridge. But it can hunt just about everything, and I think that's what's so interesting. But if it's that ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it has, you can hunt anything with it, um, and it has such a wide range of loads, why would I also see on Google this trend? So over the last eight years, you can see that 300 Win Mag is really dropping in popularity quite a lot. You know, about 30% over that time. I think there are a few answers. One being there are other 30 caliber Magnums. So now let's look at these cartridges and you see 300 Win Mag here. Well, there's the 300 WSM that's exactly the same performance, but now on a short action. You see the 300 PRC that is even more performance, you know, that much hotter of a load and taking even heavier bullets. You see the 300 Weatherby that's been around for a long, long time and the 300 RUM, the 300 Remington Ultra Mag that's just <laughs> absolutely insane how much powder they're packing into that thing. Now you can get a little bit of a picture of what else. So I think that's one reason why we might be starting to see a little decline in 300 Win Mag. The other reason I think is 6.5. The 6.5 millimeter cartridges have just overtaken everything. The 6.5 Creedmoor and 6.5 PRC. It's by no means a replacement for the 300 Win Mag, but a lot of people are choosing to take that into a deer stand rather than a heavier cartridge like the 300 Win Mag, which now brings up the next topic, and that is recoil. The recoil is significant on a, on a 300 Win Mag. You know, you're getting 30, 31 foot pounds of energy on that shoulder. If I shoot a 300 Win Mag, if I'm shooting, you know, 15 shots with no muzzle break and not that good of a recoil pad and a hunting weight rifle, after 10 shots or so, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to feel it. And, you know, you'll, the shoulder is a little bit tender after even 15 shots. But 300 Win Mag can be a completely different gun if you have it set up differently. If you put a muzzle brake on there, it can really not feel like that much or a heavier weight rifle, a good recoil pad. If you really get a rifle that's set up well for the 300 Win Mag, it's not that big of a deal. For example, this Bagara Ridge that I was set to take to Africa, the reason I picked it is it's a little bit more stout of a platform, a little bit heavier, um, and it has a nice rigid stock. Um, and when you do that, if, especially if you were to add a muzzle brake on the end, really, I could shoot it all day. It's, it's not a problem at all. So it doesn't have to be a crazy recoiling cartridge if you set it up um, on a rifle that, that really is meant to, to take it. So that's knock number one on the 300 Win Mag is the recoil. The second problem with the 300 Win Mag is the cartridge design itself. As I said, you know, released in 1963, it's been around for quite a while. And the older cartridge designs had two unique features that are problematic in today's rifles. The first of them is when you look at the cartridge, so we have the rim at the very bottom, then we have the extractor groove in there, and then we have this annoying belt, this just circle right around here. Most cartridges don't have that. If we look back at the physical cartridges, if you look at, you know, whatever, a 308, it doesn't have that belt above the extractor groove like the 300 Win Mag does. The only other cartridge out here that has the belt is here, this 300 Weatherby. You see that belt right along the bottom there. All of the others are beltless. Now, most cartridges stop on the shoulder there, but uh, these cartridges were made that they could stop on the belt doing that head spacing. And so um, now that really rifles aren't doing that at all, there's no purpose for that belt. And if you're a reloader, it's really annoying to have those belts. I, I liken the belt on a cartridge to a human's appendix, right? Like you're no healthier having an appendix. It doesn't really do anything for your body, but it can also go catastrophically wrong, right? Your appendix can go bad. You have to get it taken out. That's how I think about the belt on a 300 Win Mag. Most of the time, if you're shooting factory ammo, you don't know, you don't care, you put chuck it in your gun and you go. If you're a reloader, however, 
you reload a couple times and it's fine, but every time that die pushes down the brass on the case, it's getting stopped there and so it can create, kind of create a donut or bulge there and it just drives reloaders absolutely crazy. And so that's another problem with 300 Win Mag is it's just that's that older design. And by having that the larger glove fit of the chamber around it, it means there's a lot of variation in or a lot of jump of that bullet to get into the lands, a lot of space around that bullet as it's going into the rifling that it can rattle around and get off concentric and stuff. Now, in older times, that was a good thing to have lots of space because if every rifle manufacturer made their gun a little bit differently, it would all still chamber and work just fine. But today we have CNC machines, we can do things a lot more precise. And so if we clamp down that glove fit around the, the brass, then there's less variation. That's why so many people are crazy over the Creedmoors and PRCs is you go pick up four different loads and they're much more likely to all work well or decently well in whatever rifle that you have picked out. With a lot of the older cartridge designs, you gotta try quite a few different loads till you find one your, your gun likes. There was just more experimentation because there are more variables there. The other problem is how hot it gets. So you're burning, you know, 70, 75 grains of powder in a 300 Win Mag. That's a lot of powder. And so you'll notice when you shoot, and it was true with this rifle, even though it has a little bit thicker of a, of a contour barrel, than a lot of hunting rifles. Even so, I was shocked after I shot the, the first string of whatever five shots, I felt the barrel and it was steaming hot, like got, it got very hot very quick because it's burning so much powder in there and it took forever for the barrel to cool down between shots where most of the rifles that I test and review are, you know, 6.5 Creedmoors and stuff like that because they're just so common. It was a surprise to me how long it takes to cool down the barrel and how fast it heats up. And so for your range gun, it's just not super practical for that reason. I surveyed you guys and I said, what was your favorite cartridge, your favorite 30 caliber um, Magnum cartridge? And 55% of you guys said it was the 300 Win Mag. So it still has a ton of popularity. It's gonna be with us for decades, but the newfangled stuff seems to be taking over little bits at a time. Are they right? Tell me what you think of the 300 Win Mag, and we'll see you in the next Backfire video.